Humans of Grappling Podcast, um, episode five, with Ali Min. Men, I never, Menayan. Menayan. I've never had to say it. It's okay. It's no big deal. <laughs> cool. Um, so where the fuck have you been? <laughs> you haven't been training, bro. I do. I, I mostly okay. Well, okay. the past three weeks I was off. Oh, I, okay. I, I right, restarted right. going back in, but I mostly okay. train downtown now. Uh, okay, you're down. I, I do. I do miss the old crew. I miss yeah. Casey's class. I miss uh, the OG six a.m. class. Yeah, right. Um, I'm Bill is no longer here, but yeah. I miss training with him. He was great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. So. Yeah, so what, uh, I guess, is that closer to your work or closer to your house or something like that? Uh, my house is actually closer to the gym, but, nice. like, my job is way up Summerlin. So, oh, right, yeah, yeah, so it's, like, from my place all the way to Summerlin, it's, like, by the time I get back, class is kind of already midway through. Excellent. So I just go straight downtown and, yeah, just there train go. over there. Cool. So And I, I, I really like Jesse. I think he's a phenomenal teacher over there. Oh, for there. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely. the new guys over there are amazing too. So yeah, no, it, it's interesting that yeah, how we have multiple gyms, but also multiple class times at each of these gyms. Yeah. So it's like basically like each one with their own different culture too. Exactly. Yeah, it's so strange, but it's also it's also so awesome that we get all these different perspectives of like all these different coaches uh, at all these different times, and then you can kind of flip between a few different times and see like. A, a, a wide variety of technique for sure yeah <laughs> um so yeah what what's um the uh what, what time at downtown have you been going to um night class oh night class yeah. okay cool it's we it's usually like it's just straight um it's beginner but yeah. it's it's a little bit of everything and yeah. then we do we don't really have an advanced class so we just go straight into like situationals and from there we just uh yeah, roll until cool. Yeah, it all so, ends. <laughs> I'm, I'm turning the AC up, so it's kind of warm in here. So uh, I'm all right. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah. So what? Uh, oh, can we first talk about you? Uh, oh, this, all right. This, yeah, I'm just switch it up. I'm taking uh, control. This is the Ollie podcast. <laughs> What's up? Switching it up. Sure. No, you you had a you had an amazing year. Yep. I did. You you got married. Yeah. You got married. Uh-huh. You you got third third place in and, and ADCC that, Open. Oh, yeah, that was that, that, is, that is a big deal. That is it's, it's a like I don't know. It, it's interesting because it's not not just a local tournament. Like it's not a everyone's coming to Las Vegas. Everybody, for everybody, it. Like yeah, it's sort of like the trials, but not really. Like it's lower stakes <laughs> trials. So yeah, that, I mean that was cool. Um, yeah, I mean back when you know. Getting married is cool because it's like, like it, it's it's a it's a different level of commitment. Like it, even though like you you're getting the government involved and all that kind of stuff, like signing a piece of paper, but it's like you, it's the the change of verbiage is the biggest thing. It's like I'm for sure. It me. sounds adult. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm grown up now. Like, I, this is my girlfriend. Is it? Oh, that's so high school. Right now, yeah, exactly. Right, that's the same word you've been using since since high school. But now I, I this is my wife, Lark, and it's like oh okay, this is like. I don't know it denotes a certain yeah level of like maturity or whatever but um yeah so it's 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 dope and um yes she's super supportive has been she's life. awesome i like yeah. her oh yeah yeah but most hilarious instagram <laughs> <Finally>. <laughs> according to my friends like she, like my friends follow her and i'm like oh i didn't know you <laughs> like whatever she roasts me on her stories <laughs> and shit like that so at lark in progress if you want to follow um and then yeah, she's super supportive of like me competing, and uh, she's always there, just in case something goes wrong or whatever. I don't know whatever whatever, sure. she, whatever uh, imaginary the worries she can come up with. Um, she she's always there. So it's awesome. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, interviewing yeah. interviewing <laughs> the interviewer. Also, you you started. What, did you start global grappling last year? Uh, that was or end was of this year. End of twenty twenty. Okay. So. Okay. Was well, like, well yeah. you, you built it up this year, and yeah. then you also destroyed it this year. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and now you're doing it's, this, so yeah. it's real cool. I'm, yeah. al- I'm always, like, super, you know, vicariously invested in people, like, you know, sure. within our gym. Yeah. Like, see what they're doing, kind of, like, cheering from afar. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that that's kind of why I wanted to do this podcast, is to, like, give people more insight into, like, what they do outside of the gym. Because, like, we, we see each other, and it's, it's also, it's a weird thing to, like... 
see somebody on the street outside of their rash guard <laughs> like, <laughs> like it seems be like isn't that weird to like see like it's like dude that's what his feet looks like in shoes right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or like you wearing a hat or whatever. Yeah. Like well, you, I'm, well, I'm bald now. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so. sensitive. So, <laughs> uh, it, so it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's cool to get to know your teammates outside the gym. Definitely. So, um, this is just kind of my way of, of doing that. Um, so yeah, like all right. So I, I was about to give you a bunch of shit for like not training and haven't seen you in a while. Like you had the blue belt blues or whatever. Uh, I had a whole like. I was like, this is an intervention <laughs> to like, get you to train. No, but it sounds like you've been training. Um, so what, uh, so you're a blue belt. How long have you been training for? Oh, geez. I want to say like time flies. I think it was around 2000, was it 16 or 17? It was literally three months after Henderson opened. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. You're one so, of the OGs. So, yeah. so I was fairly new. I was here for the three original coaches: Casey, uh-huh. Andrew Ram, and Jesse Bell. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Cool. And I think Doyle joined a little bit later. I think mm-hmm. I forgot. Um, gotcha. It's interesting that yeah, those are, I, I those guys were before. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously Casey's still here, uh, but those guys are before my time. So it's like they're, sure. just, they're just legends to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I've only met Andrew Ram a handful of times. And He's like this mysterious black belt that lives in Mount Charleston. Right. <laughs> he lives on the mountain. Like, literally this, like... Taking care of horses, just uh, isolated <laughs> from the rest of us. <laughs> right. So, it, it's a... Yeah, he, he is a, a character. A, a, I mean, everyone's a character at the gym. So, For sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I came in, like, I don't know, maybe a year after you or something like that. Uh, when yeah, Mike Wilson and Dewell. That's were right. Yeah, running the six AM programs. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I remember. I remember when you first started coming in. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, you remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was actually in six AM before uh, Dewell took over. Mm. Uh, Andrew was teaching it. It was his birthday, and he was like, "Oh, could you come to my six AM for my birthday?" I'm like, yeah. "Okay, I'll wake up super <laughs> early for you, bro." <laughs> and I got I got hooked since. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Um, what do you, um, how, so how did you find it? How did you come across it initially? A jujitsu in general? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, okay. It's, it's, it's kind of a multi-layered, uh, uh, situation. So it started out, um, a few years ago. Um, so my family, um, me, my sister, my two cousins, like mm-hmm. we, we are, we are super tight. Yeah. Like I love, I love them to like we're ride or die uh-huh. um one of my cousins was having um now we were having some family issues and she was kind of being distant from us and i was uh trying to figure out a way to like kind of connect with her and so at the time she was uh she was dabbling in jiu-jitsu she started going to john jock she was also oh, wow. um, okay she was also um she was dating, uh, I'm not gonna throw out her, sure. her a person's name out, out of respect. Yeah. But he, he was a high level jujitsu oh, athlete. Okay. Gotcha. And, um, and so I was curious, cause I wanted to enter her world, kind of like connect with her. I see. And so I started researching this guy and yeah. um, uh, seeing his like, like EBI tournaments. And, oh, wow, okay. um, and I, was, I was also fascinated too, because he was playing a lot of uh, what, what I, is it called possum guard? Like when you just lie down pretending you're yeah. dead. Yep. And then, dudes come after you and you roll into like a leg lock and uh-huh. I'm like what is this sport <laughs> oh, by the way I was never a sports person I actively yeah. e- evaded PE sure. I, <laughs> I did a little bit of skateboarding and snowboarding but like for the most part I hated all sports never cared about football uh, basketball a- any of them yeah and I actually joined like ROTC just to avoid PC oh wow or, okay. a PE so <laughs> wow. okay <laughs> That's interesting. So I was like, okay, I will, and I will put myself out there. Yeah. Uh, and um, my buddy, uh, I don't know, I never know how to say his last name. It's Waya. It's uh, Chris Waya, who the Samoan guy. He occasionally uh-huh. comes in. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, Joe Rogan, uh, Eddie Bravo, and all that stuff. Yeah. Like we we all listen to podcasts, and he started going in, and I followed his lead shortly after. Yeah. And yeah, uh, uh, the first couple classes were dope. Like I've never rolled on my back since I was like a little kid, oh, and so just yeah. just the process of like moving, making space for your shoulder to like roll back, like that was so foreign to me. Right. Um, 
And I don't think I got my I got my first tab for like a whole year. Oh, for sure. And then like the first time you like um, submit like a big bodybuilder dude that just comes in trying right. it out, uh-huh. and you're like, this is real. <laughs> this, is, this is insane. This is real. Yeah. I'm choking him. This is real life. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's a. It's definitely like a. You know the the meme where it's like what gives feelings a power or whatever. <laughs> and it's like strangling somebody who's just walk, walking off the street who, <laughs> who like the general population would be afraid of but like you like we have a different set of people that we're we're afraid of rich castro <laughs> dude is yeah, half was, my size yeah just kimura's me like within seconds exactly yeah, no, he, i'm afraid of him too like he, he he fucks me up and he's yeah like I, i've got 100 pounds on him so <laughs> it's uh or maybe not 100 pounds but 80 but to like, um, you know, fast sure, forward, sure. fast yeah. forward a little. Um, yeah. um, my cousin, she's like a brown belt now at John Jocks. Oh, yeah, she, she's yeah. she's uh, in de- yeah. she's in it. Uh, yeah. She she married uh, one of the people in there. Oh, okay. uh, one of the instructors, sure. Marcel, who's like we're all super tight. That's dope. And uh, it's cool because uh, she got into art. Um, and so okay. I, I I like to think in yeah. my head that like we both went full circle. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys created yeah. bodies. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so so then you you got influenced by her to like come in definitely yeah. and uh, and like by accident I I loved it I see I, I loved the um, we started doing like flow rolls I started saying uh, what was that girl's name Grace Gundrum yeah uh-huh. oh, just yeah. like flow rolling with her instructor who's like twice as big as her right and like how like they were baiting limbs mm-hmm. and like I love that like chess aspect of it and I was like oh this is this I get it like right. this is cool yeah the, there, there's a whole like layers and layers of like strategy going on yeah like instantaneously that's dope sweet so I guess what why Temple Planet uh, John Jock or Ed, like Eddie Bravo Joe Den- Ray, like, definitely you know? definitely that um yeah. it was also I, I went to I shouldn't drop the names I went to sure. a couple two yeah. other uh, <laughs> Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gyms, yeah. um, uh-huh. and I like I like I just love uh, Casey's also is like super magnetic. Sure, yeah, yeah. No, he, <laughs> so he, his personality I definitely like gravitated towards. Uh-huh. But uh, I also love like the people there. It was it felt yeah. way more laid back for sure. And everyone the other gyms were kind of more militant. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. lack of a better word. Yeah. And um, I was how old was I when I started? Was I 27? I was, I was, I'm already like nearing 30 and I'm like, dude, I can't take shit from another adult. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) Maybe you you could fool me when I'm little, but there's no way. If someone starts yelling at me, I'm just going to like walk away. Like I I don't react to those people in general. So like I, I generally like, I'm like people that are cool and chill. I'm like easy to meld with. Definitely. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, no, Temple Planet is like a band of misfits. Like we <laughs> we, we uh, just, you know, like we, we don't fit in with jujitsu, so it attracts people who don't necessarily want to like, yeah, be like in somebody's program and like on like whatever being strict and regimented. It's like yo, know, we're we're doing something that we enjoy. We're doing something fun. Like we don't have to be here. Yeah, we're we we're here because we want to be here. So. And I've I've heard the term Franken Jitsu thrown around from other gyms, oh, interesting. where they're like they don't want you to train with other people because like it ruins your ruins. The yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, when has that not benefited something right. like yeah. anything? Our technology, like when you just take from something else and mash it. Right. And so I saw that in Ten Planet, uh-huh. uh, where they were just open to whatever Definitely. news. So right. Yeah. No. And, and that's. That I've never heard that term before. Yeah. As a disparaging <laughs> term, and I was like, "Wow, Franken Jitsu." That? I feel like attacked now because <laughs> it's like, why not have Franken Jitsu? Like, isn't that the best thing? Like, I totally I, agree. I want Rich Castro's uh, Kimura. I want Casey's side choke. I want like, <laughs> whatever. It, it, if you train other places, like, go get their best shit and like bring it back, right? Um, or Gordon Ryan's leg locks, like you, yeah. you watch a DVD. Is that Franken Jitsu? Like, is it, I don't know. So is that? Uh, I of course. I mean, this is the culture. Is like where we love training with everyone. We invite a bunch of people to like train with us at Open Mat, and like people cross train with us all the time. Definitely. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. That, <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, there's still there's still holdouts for whatever reason. 
I mean, I mean, I we know the reason. It's money because like you don't like that's one hundred fifty dollars a month per person. Yeah. If somebody leaves you, then that they could bring people with them, and like you start losing money as an instructor. So definitely gym owner. So I I get why that developed, but like like uh, ADCC just had whatever twelve thousand spectators here in Las Vegas yeah. that traveled here. Like jujitsu is not growing smaller; it's only getting <laughs> bigger. So. Uh, I, I think there's yeah, there's plenty of room to grow for everyone, um, and Tenth Planet is just kind of at the forefront of that. Of like just hey, look, just kind of loose affiliation, like not um, being su- super uptight about cross track. Definitely, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so, what does grappling mean to you since you started? <laughs> Uh, again, going back, it was, yeah. it was a way for me to connect with my cousin. Yeah. But, um, um, and, and maybe since, yeah, yeah. after that. <clears throat> it's also evolved. I mean, like, I'm a, uh, I'm my main professional. I'm an artist. I'm a professional artist. I'm also uh, a musician. So sure. the majority of the time, it's like I'm in, I'm sitting down. Yeah. And, uh, um, like, you, I, you can't be like a full, like, round person uh-huh. like well you eventually do turn around but <laughs> right. you can't be a whole person by yeah. like um, not accessing like other parts of you in sure. my opinion in yeah. my case it was like a physical part of me mm. and so I was like as much as I hated sport like I thought like this doesn't feel like a sport by the way sure it feels yeah. like hanging out with your friends playing like chess like, yeah exactly and uh, you're literally making jokes as you're like choking each other exactly like, it's a right. cool little hangout so like yeah, and the, it's the complete opposite of sitting in front of or s- running on a treadmill, just yeah. watching the most horrific news. And <laughs> yeah. I, I hated the gym so much; I still hate it. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, it was the opposite of that. I got to access uh, that part of me mm-hmm. where um, I feel uh, a more whole, better human being. That's awesome. By accessing my physical side, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And if you told me I was gonna do that, like in my early twenties, yeah. Like, I would have been like, you're not doing That's insane. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that back in your long hair days where you're like, uh, a fucking... Oh, by the way, I, I ended up quitting ROTC so I could grow out my hair. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. I was, I was, I was going to, like, yeah, well, I wanted to circle back to that. It's like, what what the fuck? Like, why were you not? Like, what? ROTC what, was... Uh, but, uh, J-R-O-T-C, I should yeah, say. Yeah, right. Um, what was cool is, like, I, I'm also a fan of history. Uh, and so, like, okay. the first, like... Three fourths of the class, you're sitting down just doing like memorizing historical events, your chain of command, uh-huh. uh, blah blah blah. Yeah. And like it was just the last quarter when you're actually outside running and uh, doing push ups. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'll just suffer for that. Right. That bit if I can avoid pee. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you're doing more pee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're high school, but things don't fully track. But, uh, Dude, if yeah, they had cool. if they had jujitsu, man, I probably would have done like wrestling too. Sure. Like if I if I knew how fun it is. Yeah, yeah. wrestling's a little like this is a little different. It's less. I mean, there you still hang out like you still become really close with the guys, but um, the practices are like more intense. Yeah. So it's yeah, yeah. so the practices wouldn't be as fun, but like you still dick around with your friends like afterwards and like on tournaments on Saturdays like tournament tournaments were like I don't know. It, we we got really got into card games because like you're just sitting there waiting around waiting to get called <laughs> and like we would get up super early in the morning and like drive there people are cutting weight or whatever we're asleep like we're <laughs> we have like 10 people to like an eight person van so like kids are on the ground and shit like not wearing seatbelt i don't know it was, just a, <laughs> it was just a wild time um but then like yeah, like you get it, get there at seven, weigh in, and then the tournament doesn't start till ten. So you have a lot of like free time, and just we're sitting around like playing cards and hanging out. So it, there, there is like that like chilling with your bros aspect, but the, at the same time, like I don't know, yeah, the physical activity is, is is a little bit more intense for sure. So. I was gonna ask that because I listened to your first podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm a fan. Oh, <laughs> thank <laughs> um, you. You talked about how like you got into jujitsu to uh, get that part of you that never got state, yeah, or went into yeah, state. Like, exactly. did you feel a little bit whole when you did get third place in your ADCC 
I, I felt like the big push was trials. Like that that was um, so the ADCC Open. That that's sort of like that's cool, but it was like it. I put way more emphasis on trials because that that was like I thought about that for like two years, and it was like when so in 2019 Thor, uh, John Thor Blank, he's um, just just a guy. He, like he had a day job. He was an electrician. He, he, he had a nine <laughs> you should get five. him on this podcast. I, I should have. <laughs> I, I was sitting with him during the main ADCC tournament. Um, I was hanging out with him. It was, it was super dope to get his like perspective. Unfortunately, he was hurt this oh, he, he he tore his bicep tendon. So, um, but uh, yeah, so like I saw Thor, Thor do it, and he had a nine to five, and I was like, oh shit, like <laughs> like maybe I could do it, and that kind of put that incepted the the idea into my head. Oh, sick. And okay, so I was cool. Like, cool. It, I was like, oh, maybe I can do trials. Like this was still like way beyond like. I had no idea how well I could do or whatever. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I keep training, keep training. I uh, work with Leonard to improve my wrestling. And it's like, he beats the hell out of me, but I feel a lot better because of it. So it's a it's a good trade-off. Uh, and then, uh, it, yeah, like, I don't know, trials comes up, like uh, West Coast trials, uh, April this year. And it was like kind of like I, I peaked for that it a, a bunch of shit went wrong around trials but i peaked for it and i was like i won three matches my first day and i was super focused i was in it and um i, I, I i'm already repeating stories on the podcast so, <laughs> so i feel like joe rogan repeating the same story <laughs> like <laughs> this is gonna be mike lady story number three that's okay, uh, that's okay. Of, of, ADC, ADC trials, I get sick. So I end up with hand, foot, and mouth disease that I later find out. Like, I never had it as a kid. Apparently, it's something you, have get, you get as a kid and you just hmm. never get it anymore. So somebody brought it with them on my first day. Um, so then I'm like uh, feverish, chills. I sleep like shit, like Saturday night into Sunday. I have a match with Elder Cruz, which who was just in the main ADCC like tournament this last weekend. So uh, that's the, I, I, I made it. I was like, I, I reached this level of like, I, I'm going against the best guys now. Sick. Like th this cool. was like my yeah. my goal with this thing. It was like, I, I want to, there, there is no like um, filter for like who can do, do what tournaments or whatever, right? Like any any Joe Blow off the street can, can sign up <laughs> for these tournaments. Uh, it just depends how, how well you're going to do. So the, it's a um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there there's no uh, gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. there, it's not like you can't just go out and compete against LeBron James in basketball or whoever. So for sure to to go with the top guys, it's kind of crazy. Um, so yeah. Uh, compete against Elder Cruz. I, I somehow feel good enough to go out and compete, and I only lose by like three points a back take. So nice. um, that's still impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's, very cool. Thank you. Yeah. So <laughs> that that was kind of like my. I was like, this is what I worked so hard for, and yeah, this is what I told myself like ten years ago when I first started. This is what I wanted to do. Is like, I wanted to be a world champion because I wanted to like be the best at something, yeah. right? Um, I had no idea what, how it was going to look like, but it turned out that I can still like compete against the best guys. Like even if I, I'm not a black belt yet, I can still enter these like high level tournaments and do well against these guys. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like my why behind yeah. doing jujitsu and it's kind of the, I don't know to make up for the competitiveness that I lost out on <laughs> when I was a senior in high school. So thank you for listening. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> we all start somewhere. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the origin story, <laughs> the villain origin story. Um, cool. So I guess, yeah, you mentioned your day job already. Like you're a, a graphic designer. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that's what pays the bills, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's what funds, <laughs> funds the grappling. Uh, that's cool. So uh, how did you get into that? So, so I've, I've always been an artist, sure. like, like yeah. 
even my my mom she was like dude at one point i was staring at you and i'm like there's no way in the hell you were going to be a math or a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> and like it was um it was also kind of keeping me out of trouble as well too it's like dude don't mess okay. with ollie he'll draw you goku right <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you uh, traded that for uh, <laughs> street cred. <laughs> and, like, I, I was never, um, I'm a lot better now, but I was never good at uh, expressing myself, like, through words. And True. so, like, yeah, art was definitely something that, that helped me with that. Uh -huh. um, and it was just, like, I always knew I was going to be an artist. Sure. But I, like, like it, I knew I wasn't going to fail. That was, like, never an option. It was, mm -hmm. like, okay, let's just go to college and right. get this out of the way yeah, kind, right. kind of situation. Sure. And my, my original goal was to graduate art school and then uh, immediately go to like sound school because uh, it, it was always like, they were always tied. Like interesting. while I was doing art, I also played violin or viola. Uh, okay, and like, like, like since I was like early teens, uh, like, okay. like 13 maybe. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. No, that, those <laughs> instruments are no joke. Like, like, <laughs> Like little kids, like they start them early on, like whatever. Uh, they, they you know what's funny? Like I always thought I was good, and then I re-listened to like one of my old middle school. <laughs> <laughs> I was just screeching. Right. I was like, ooh. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, going going back to like college, uh, sure. I started. College was great. Like yeah. like, I, there was like two instructors that I really loved. There was um. I have a lot of friends there that I'm still friends with that are like way big in the industry oh, right nice. now in video games and yeah, okay. movies or what have you. Dope. And um, the whole time I was there, I was just YouTubing. So I didn't really learn a whole lot mm. like from people. I was just like teaching myself and then teaching the instructors. Oh wow. And okay. so like by the time I graduated, I was just I was like, I'm not gonna go to college. I'm not, like for a sound, I'm gonna sure. teach myself. Yeah. So literally like like I I'm not like equivalent in my like um, my music skills as to my art, but uh -huh. like I like to think I'm like getting up there. there. Yeah, yeah yeah. And and it was definitely not the hundred thousand dollars like loan like <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's ultimately what you do anyway, right? Yeah. Like, you ultimately have to, like, learn it for yourself. Like, a teacher can, like, present information to you. Sure. But then you have to do the work to get it into your brain. And Definitely. Do, do whatever whatever assignments or whatever thing, structure um, program that you're on to, like, go and do the thing. Definitely. And on my free times, I still teach myself. Yeah. Um, like, whether, like, the new software... Uh, mm -hmm. is out or in this case uh ai is big now i'm teaching myself oh uh, nice but, yeah yeah <laughs> um, right. and so um um damn what was i gonna say i lost my train of thought that's oh, all right <laughs> i mean let, let, let's hop on ai for a second like okay. you've done some crazy <laughs> shit with that like it's super super cool like, it's this. cool it's um AI is one of those things where I wish it never existed, <laughs> but since the like Pandora's box is open, I'm sure. using it to my advantage. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. But like, I, I I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. Like as far as like money goes, sure. But like all the new guys coming up, like that industry, like has been chopped in half. Oh, yeah. Really? So I like I feel so bad for like all the upcoming like concept artists. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so so it's like a. Fan, people that do uh, artwork for fantasy novels, that job is gone. <laughs> right? <laughs> Album art, that job is gone. <laughs> Freelance art has been cut. Um, my industry is a little different. I'm, I'm in the, I should say, I'm in the casino gaming industry. So I, I make art animation for slot machines. Um, sure. And like it pays the bills. Yeah. And more importantly, like it gives me lots of time to do other shit like jujitsu or music. That's cool. So like, like, yeah. like that's why I love that. It's a good industry. combination. Yeah, yeah. It, it all works out for me. Yeah. Like people that are in the video game industry, they or, or movies, they are slaves. Right. Like they are constantly working overtime uh, to bust out like stupid deadlines, yeah. um, unrealistic deadlines. Definitely. And so like like I'm 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 cool where I'm at right now. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a good like balancing point to be at definitely because uh, I, I found that with my job too it was like I've, I've at first like I was I mean in tech in enterprise tech 
Um, it's not as like brutal as say like working for Google or Facebook or whatever. Um, so it's a little bit slower pace, but I still like, I kind of fucked up at the beginning. I had to like change around the company. I've still been with the same company for eight years now. Um, but I've kind of like had to reinvent myself and like constantly like learn new things. And, um, and that's been the fun part is like adding to my skill set. um, sort of like, like learn, learning for myself, like teaching myself whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think that's just kind of like what makes a person valuable. It's, it's the process of becoming skilled. Definitely. Is, oh, so, yeah. So like a lot of people that are only concept artists, yeah. like they're fucked. Sure. So, so like in my case, I also know like visual effects. I know, uh, uh, uh illustrator, I know 3d, I know, sure. um, uh, enough technical art to like be proficient with a software engineer. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can say, Oh, move this whatever button over here. For sure. Or like if they're running into problems, I can come up with solutions to help software engineers. So gotcha. yeah. Right. We only, we only have so much, uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> bandwidth or CPU or sure. whatever, power and we can't, we, we can't run your fancy we could, animation. We could day. bully you into it, but right. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, yeah, so I, I guess the who are the concept artists or whoever like who who whoever's going to get put out of a job um, due to the AI like what they they just have to add like skills definitely yeah. interesting yeah it's a bummer but uh, yeah. Um, yeah it is what it is and it's yeah. uh, it's funny because like I'm all, I'm also in the music world sure and so it's interesting seeing like what happened to music happened to like digital art oh okay like, how, like, like how like <laughs> Explain all that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, like like we got um, you know, aside from sampling, we literally got AI drumming uh, now, okay. which I use to my advantage. Sure, like I, I like finding oh, musicians are the fucking worst. <laughs> 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 like I'm a very organized uh, person, sure. and so uh, I'm actually like you have I, a corporate job. That's <laughs> yeah, like, like for most sure. musicians do not have corporate jobs. They, they are broke. they are chaotic. Yeah, but like that's what makes them brilliant. Sure, and so you have to kind of like contain that chaotic energy and yeah. like you know drummers like they might be uh, flaky or right. um egotistical and all this other stuff and you just have to manage it sure but um and like like micing them up it's, it's a process and okay. so like sometimes like like yeah fuck it just get like a ai <laughs> <laughs> don't have to deal with the person <laughs> it doesn't talk back to you <laughs> so it um uh, it was just, definitely it was definitely like that like in a band um, like yeah, multiple people's clashing and everything like that. Uh, um, oh man, I'm sorry. Your 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 audience is gonna have to listen to my scatterbrained ass. No, <laughs> this is what it's for. Is we're, we're 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 getting to know Ali here. For sure. So, um, oh by the way, so when I jumped into jujitsu, there was also a lull period in my music mm -hmm. world. Um, where we just finished releasing an album, we were mm -hmm. kind of like exhausted, yeah. and so I had all this extra free time. So I did I do jujitsu. The see. first three years, I went hard yeah. with jujitsu. Right. Uh, I did, uh, I did three tournaments, oh. I think. Uh, I had abs. <laughs> you had abs. I had abs. Yeah. I was looking at old uh, pictures. Uh -huh. uh, my biceps <laughs> looked we like I was standing next to Dejan. Dejan was skinny too back yeah. then. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it just looked comically yeah, fake. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, um, um, shortly, I think I mentally started quitting jujitsu like like before my blue belt. I see. Uh, so uh, you, it was a slow. Like, yeah, yeah. It, well, because around that time, I also had uh, I got a crap ton of injuries. Like I remember my rib pop. Yeah. Um, I had sciatica because oh, no, yeah, I played so I played much. a lot of guard, and uh, so like. Yeah, your I guess your lower spine just like Doesn't degrades, like um, and um, yeah, it's just a nerve from your lower back all the way to your leg, uh, and so it's like the only comfortable position I could be was like child's pose in yoga. Uh, that was the only time the pain stopped. Uh, like so, so it was torture, and like I started um, re falling in love with like music again. I see. And so yeah, yeah. And <laughs> uh, okay, so music took you. Well, I mean, yeah. in music and injuries it took you. In I have a question because because sure. you're also in the creative world. Sure. Um, by the well, time, th thank you. <laughs> I, 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 I like I like to think so. I mean, you're like, aside from this, but also I like to think coding is creative. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But when you finish uh, a jujitsu class and you go home, like, 
like do you still work on stuff or do you just like pass out like, <laughs> I, I mean i train at 6 a.m oh yeah so that's I, right, that's I, right, I don't that's have right. the option to like, i've actually like, passed out like in at work like oh, right really? after 6 a.m oh, so yeah. <laughs> I, I just start being um uh, mindful of my time right yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's um well today i uh well i i tend to burn the candle at both ends sometimes like i i was up late last night and i had to get up early this morning and so i took a nap at lunch today so like gotcha. I, I i make it up somewhere i try to like okay because uh, otherwise i get sick like if i don't get like uh Cause enough sleep. Uh, the re- the reason I asked is sure. like like that three years where I went hard. Yeah. Like like that's all I did. Like sure. was work, jujitsu, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, and that's and, that. and so so it's like um when I tried that again, like something always suffers. Sure. Like like my music stuff where I just stare at my monitor and I'm like I can't do it. <laughs> so I try I try to do at least three times a week and an open mat if I can. Sure. So that that's my like so my Your my schedule my. My path to a black belt is going to be significantly slower, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's um, well, okay, two, <laughs> two things from there. Um, yes, when when I when I went hard for like training for trials, work definitely suffered for me. I was like my and because I was also like making content for Go Grappling, and yeah, like that. Um, that took a lot of time and like. My my eye was not on the ball for work, but I, w- I was still keeping it up and like like my boss was happy, everybody was happy at work, but I was just like not focused <laughs> and I was just like focused on this tournament, winning this trials, punching my ticket to ADCC, like that that was like my my goal. <clears throat> and since then, like I, I've there there was like a big like stress buildup for that and once the the trials passed i was like <sighs> like i i just had to like chill for three months i i have i haven't really been lifting weights or training like training extra or anything like that i've just been just going to class and just like more or less hanging out because like that that required like a lot of like oh it took a lot out of me mm. And, and I've been focused on work more now, and I've been doing. I've been kicking even more ass at work. So nice. it, it, me at fit like fifty percent attention at work. Like now I'm at like eighty percent attention at work, and I'm like kicking even more ass, even more ass. So it's it's a, uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's different things to balance, and um, like I, I go to therapy, and my therapist is like, yeah, some balls like are rubber, and like if you like you're juggling balls and. Some balls are glass and break if you drop them. Mm. And some balls are rubber. If you like drop them, they can like you can pick them back up and start going again. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, cause yeah, I'm as you can tell, type A personality. Where it's like I I just want to be the best at everything. It's like <laughs> even though it's like completely unrealistic and like totally not um, whatever. I'm somewhat setting myself up for failure. But I want to like, expand on that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one thing I love about downtown is yeah. like the younger kids, uh-huh. like uh, Angel, um, Khalil. Um, I don't know how old Jill is, but like, yeah, she look, she looks young. She's a cool header, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them have that like vibrant, um, like optimistic energy. Sure. Yeah. And like, I, I'm I'm 34. <laughs> it's like I don't right. see me doing that. Sure. But yeah. like that that energy is so contagious i love yeah. like being around it being around it. the same the same way like being around depressing people is contagious sure. yeah <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a it's a virus it's a definitely like you can transfer i mean uh the the actual word for memes is like ideas you can like memes can have a have lives oh i heard about uh Dawkin. yeah I, I i read the book um selfish the selfish gene in which he like proposes this idea of a meme in 1990 something or whatever <laughs> and but we just repurposed it for funny pictures for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a self-contained idea and like yeah like you like you mentioned like it's contagious like like literally the word contagious is is like it's a disease mm-hmm. or yeah, yeah. passing it around to each other right so yeah you have to pick your circle carefully you have to choose be intentional about who you're around um I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is like it, it makes me feel young still. Sure. Yeah. A, lo- a lot of like, um, yeah. How old are you? You're 30, 31. Okay, f- fairly similar age. Yeah. Like a lot of people like that I grew up with in high school, they just like turned to their parents mm-hmm. and like just mm-hmm. like gave up. 
Yeah. Like like emotionally, they like sure. like even when you look at them physically, you can just tell yeah. they gave up. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, being being around people like yeah. that kind of like still makes me feel. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's um, weirdly. I don't know. I don't know if it's Vegas or whatever, but like <laughs> we're, we're we're out here in like Party Central, and like there's a, a, a variety of people out here. Everyone, every everyone here is from somewhere else. Yeah. Like, did, did you move here? <laughs> I was born in Iran. You were born in Iran. Yeah, exactly. So like, every, everyone's a, a transplant here. So I think this is it's a weird like the people who moved away from their hometowns like don't have the option or what. Like, yes, it kind of sucks that we're, like, away from our parents or whatever, but at the same time, like, we're not influenced by the the environment that we grew up in. And we, we're, we're not, like, I don't know, subject to, we're just like, oh, we're just going to do the same thing that we, whatever my parents did. And Franken-jitsu. Franken. <laughs> Different perspectives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're in this melting pot of perspectives out here. Definitely. And um, we're... I mean, not to say that we're kids or whatever. Like that we're we're grown kids out here, like making our own choices yes. and choosing the environments that we want to be in. And uh, I mean, jujitsu is one of the best environments you can be in. <laughs> it's like because it's a everyone is like getting better, and it's a positive upward spiral. Mm-hmm. Everyone, ha- yeah, has that energy of like. Um, like when I come in at 6 a.m., it's like everyone <laughs> really wants to be there. Yeah. Like because they're missing sleep probably <laughs> because or they or Dude, they the re- first couple minutes of waking up is torture. I, yeah, time. every day for for me too. <laughs> like I, I I live for this shit is and I every time my alarm wakes me up, I'm like fuck. <laughs> this is my that's my first <laughs> thought in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the, this is me doing the doing it for the thing that I love the most. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't I don't know where I was going with that. But, <laughs> it, but anyways, yeah, like we're it's a um, the community aspect of jujitsu is super huge. And I think that like you mentioned, like being around other like minded people, mm-hmm. um, everybody wanting to get better at whatever they're doing. Yeah, and it, it makes me want to be better at art. Yeah. That's cool. Or music or what have you. Right. Yeah, so how much uh, crossover do you see, like, with whatever, jujitsu and art and, like, the process of Oh, man. <laughs> I was actually wondering if you're going to ask, ask yeah. this question. Sure. Um, actually, so Andrew Ram, going back to him. All right. Um, one thing I liked about him was, uh, he, by the way, he's a very uh, acquired taste sure. of a coach. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, like you I love you, Andrew. He's definitely on the spectrum. Definitely on the spectrum. And um, maybe it's because I'm around a lot of artists that are like that. Uh, like, I can kind of, like, relate to him in a way. Yeah. And he, the way he taught me, he loves teaching custom jiu-jitsu, where it fits, like, a person's body type uh, kind okay. of thing. All right. And the way he related to me was, um, when, I'm, when I make music, yeah, or when... <laughs> Scratch that. When I was learning music, yeah. I dreaded like the scales, like memorizing mm-hmm. the scales, mm-hmm. memorizing yeah. the chords. Sure. And I'm a big fan of like when like inventing your own chords. Sure. Like start out with like a triad, and then maybe add a fourth or a seventh, and then a, a, a lower the second a half step, uh, <laughs> and, and like sure. like making your own like exotic chords. Sure. And the way he taught jujitsu was similar to that, mm-hmm. where it was like. Um, like you don't have to like go this path if your leg is this way you can just like go to a mountain instead mm-hmm. um and i've been a big fan of transitions in jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. so like like lately um, jesse's been doing this a lot downtown where it's like guillotine to anacondas to dars oh, and uh, like the triangle around that sure um and triangles on the plot the arm bars yeah. like same thing uh-huh. and so um or if you lose mount um or um, if they're escaping, like your back take, you can kind of like go around to a mount kind right. of thing. I don't yeah. know. Sure. Like, yeah. like, like little things like that. And yeah. so it's like, yeah, I, I don't like the structure, but I like uh, if there's a path, like you can make your own path kind mm-hmm. of thing. So right. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, that, definitely. Like it's a, um, there's a standard way, quote unquote standard way, like 
what cookie cutter way to learn jujitsu or learn anything. And then once you have a basic understanding of it, then you can kind of make your own. Like yeah. once you know the rules, you can break it. You remember like the first two years of jujitsu, it's like you learn something, it's like, oh, I could use that for something I learned like two months ago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, like you, you, you haven't seen all the things yet and yeah. you're, you're just like, oh. And you, you can tell that the coaches are frustrated. Like when you get, kind of ask questions, it's like, just hold on, just keep learning. For sure. Yeah. Just can just do what I tell you, you'll eventually figure out why I'm telling you to just shut up. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I I'm lucky I only fill in every so often. And I'm just like, let me just teach some cool thing that I'm doing and then I don't have to worry about <laughs> the repercussions. <laughs> um Yeah, that, that's that's interesting. That um I feel like yeah, we lose like I I've, I've been doing jujitsu ten years, so it's a it's weird to like think back like it, it, it's i mean that's the same thing with anything like you forget what it's like to be a beginner right? yeah so um i i do remember walking into triangles for six months and like i just had no idea like i was like what is going on like because i was a wrestler i i pressured in i just i was just forward drive like i didn't yeah, they're know, like come to me exactly yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is what we want <laughs> So I didn't understand, oh, you can do like side to side pressure and like whatever. You don't have to be all in forward. So um, it, yeah, I have to kind of remind myself like, and, and I kind of do this like when I uh, roll with people, uh, I mean, when, when I roll with the, like people younger in the sport and I say like, hey, you, like, I just always give somebody like a little tip after our role. I'm like, oh, hey, you can do do this thing or whatever. Just to remind myself, oh, this person probably does, has never seen that before yeah. or whatever. And I always try to be the, like, the upper belt that I wish I had of like somebody who would just give me the answer. It also kind of like reinforces your own knowledge as well too. Definitely, exactly. Because I'm like, oh, th that's ex this is the thing that happened? Okay, I that, that makes it more concrete in my head and like expressing it and knowing that, hey, like I've, whatever, I can package this up in like, show this person, hey, this this specific thing is what's happening. So, yeah, uh, it's cool. It's cool to, like, yeah, like, we're, we're mid-career professionals. We're <laughs> not close to retirement yet or whatever. <laughs> this is this is growing up, apparently. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a slow death. It's a slow, <laughs> a slow decline. <laughs> we're, we're, we're the old farts who are, like, uh, you young, young whippersnappers make me feel young again or whatever. So. When did Casey start jujitsu? He was 30, right? Really? I, I have no idea. Because, like, one of the first things I asked him when I joined, I'm like, yeah. should, should I bother? Like, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm 26. Like, I see a bunch of, like, kids over here, right. like, killing each other. Like, do I stand a chance? He's like, yeah, I think he said, like, yeah, he started when he was 30. Uh, I think okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a that's a good like testament because yeah like Doug started when he was forty or something like that so he's forty five forty six now so yeah. it's it's a good thing to um, yeah have have examples for different people at different levels and what what you mentioned here I'll circle back to <laughs> where uh, what I wanted to go with you saying your your path to black belt is going to take longer not necessarily it's just different right like. If you're you're the three to four times a week kind of guy, then that that's the the trajectory you're going. Like somebody like Spencer who literally lives in the gym. Yeah. Oh, maybe that <laughs> <laughs> doesn't literally live in the gym for whoever's listening. Um, uh, he has a secret dungeon he is, yeah. where he stays at. Right. Uh, he uh, like his. So the standard for his black belt is going to be that much higher, right? That's true. That's so, true. Because because the expectations are much higher. Uh, for me, the expectations for for myself are higher. It's like, oh, I I don't expect to have the next belt unless I'm like the world champion at the current belt or whatever. Like, like that is the the standard for myself. If somebody wants to give me a belt before then, great. But if not, like if I'm not the world champion at purple belt, all right, I've got more work to do. Yeah. So. It's it's a arbitrary kind of thing that I don't know motivates people to stick with it because for whatever reason reason we decided that belts were cool, <laughs> but then Tenth Planet doesn't really wear belts, so 
it, it's yeah it's also interesting yeah to not have that always represented on uh, in nogi where it's like people wear crazy unicorn rash guards <laughs> and spats and things like that right uh, <laughs> so you have no idea what somebody's skill level is sometimes by the way my first couple of rash guards that i ordered uh like I didn't know the ranking system, no. so I got like a couple purple ones. <laughs> you were like, oh, oh like this, this color, this, this is pretty cool. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who called me. It was like, do not wear that in class. I'm like, oh shit, right? <laughs> yeah, that, it's always funny to see that. Like <laughs> when people buy the the black belt ones and they're not black belt, they, they wear any hint of red. I'm like, are you really a black belt? Or, and, no, dude, that, that guy's black. just ambitious. As right, fuck. exactly, right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a weird, it, we make meaning out of these, I don't know, it's just clothing, right? It's just like, I mean, it, it's colored pieces of fabric, the, uh, you, arguably art, who knows, <laughs> like, but it, I think it's the, the meaning that we put onto the thing that's important, like the, our, our personal meaning. The, the... Uh, the meaning and like we kind of like romanticize it in a weird way where it's like that guy is like put a lot of hours to yeah, get that definitely to, to have the honor to wear that sure yeah exactly so it's not a yeah it, it, the belt only covers two inches of your ass so you have to cover the rest of it that, that whole thing it's like you're, you you worked so hard to achieve that then yeah you you have to like it's still on you like the skill doesn't like magically appear or disappear with a belt or whatever um but you have to um uh, i don't know just be a like if you were in the system like that that's kind of what you're subjecting yourself to is like disappointment potentially if you feel like you you deserve a belt but you don't or whatever i don't know it, it's a it's a weird thing but we uh Kind of, it's kind of what we all decided on. Yeah, <laughs> that we all kind of agreed to by doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu <laughs> instead of Brazilian wrestling or whatever, right? Um, Once in a blue moon, you go on YouTube and you see a guy promoting himself, and then everyone's like, What the? What is it? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Everybody's like, No, <laughs> that guy's not a real black belt or, or brown belt or whatever, right? It's cool. Um, sweet. So, going back to like, I mean, of course, you you say you're, you've always been an artist or whatever. So you obviously like you've enjoyed it from a young age. Like, what what meaning do you find in, in your profession, in, profession slash hobby? But if you if you differentiate them, if, is it all one thing? Is it all one art, or do you view them as separate things? Ooh, that is a that is a good question. Yeah. Uh, lately, I think it has been. Uh, they've been complementing each other. Yeah. Because when I do make a track like. Uh, sometimes I, or sometimes I make I might make the artwork first, and then like uh, like it might sound like this. Yeah. So, so there is that. Um, my art art, um, it's it's kind of interesting. It's yeah. like 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 when I do graphic design stuff, it is yeah. like strictly for money. Uh -huh. I yeah. hate I hate doing it's it. It's a for, transaction. I it's hate just... doing it for other people. Uh, uh, it's mo and it's mostly a time thing. Like when I wake up, it's mostly like how can I squeeze in music time or jujitsu sure. time. Yeah. And so like, I did uh, freelance for a little bit, and it was torture. Like because sure. it was just like, will I get my money this time, or <laughs> they come back with another request, yeah. and it's like, it adds up to where it was never worth the amount of money. Like they offered me in the first place. Sure, yeah, you're uh, so, less than minimum. So I, <laughs> yeah, so so like, um, yeah, my day job is strictly my day job. Yep. I hate doing art for other people. Uh -huh. um, but the music is completely opposite. Sure. I, I like actively scout crazy musicians mm -hmm. to work with me. That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. And I don't do that for the money. Yeah. Well, um, I've done a couple free DJ gigs. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care. Like like it just feels good. Yeah. Uh, and and if it was the other way around, uh -huh. like yeah, it would be strictly money for music and art for everyone. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> gotcha. Interesting. But um, but yeah, there's definitely like a tie-in connection, like as far as uh, um both worlds i right. can't i can't see one without the other sure yeah i mean it's yeah i, I don't know i guess the, the let me pose the, the ridiculous question what is art 
<laughs> I feel like Lex Friedman. Like, oh, man. <laughs> Lately, I don't know, because I've always had like a definition in the beginning, but it's changed so much, sure. especially with AI now. Uh, like, I have to redefine art again. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. I have to keep defining. Um, and I guess at the end of the day, like it is subjective. It is. Um, Dude, I've heard, I've listened to some dog shit music that like they just crush the shit out of it, it's just distorted. Uh, but like people are like, they love it. And I'm like, I'm over here <laughs> sculpting every sound, yeah. like to make room for the bass, to make room for the vocalist over here. And uh, it's nightly, nicely packaged and pristine. Yeah. And it's like this chaotic energy over here, like, right. like it's super successful. Um, but um, for me, it's a way of just like, I, I have a bunch of emotions that's just like will that wants to escape and yeah. I just pour it out. Pour it out. That, 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 that's what it is for me. Yeah. But like as for everyone else, it's like whatever makes you feel feel. Yeah. Like yeah, whether if it's like disgust or hate or mm -hmm. like makes you feel warm or nostalgic. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it is. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Good because yeah, like I I love yeah, certain bands and like it you, it's a not to get too hippy dippy, it catches a vibe. Like it, yeah. it, it strings a. That's a real thing, dude. I, I listen to like some songs, and that just like I can close my eyes, and it takes me back to high school. Exactly. Like I could like breathe um, the like alleys we were like hanging out with. Mm -hmm. Like like it, it, it. I'm a very sensual person, sure. so like I can like take myself there like immediately through music. Or, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Because yeah, like, like it's your. Is it? It's the artist. Imp like imparting their feelings into this whatever medium that you're expressing yourself in like music or or pictures or wh whatever art mm -hmm. and it's the observer of like oh that that resonates with me it's like that's yeah like that that i understand that or or maybe not understand that but i like it for whatever reason yeah right so yeah it's interesting because yeah like i i don't know i, I i'm into well not into like ska music in general. I'm just into Streetlight Manifesto, which is like <laughs> my own, like that's by far my favorite band. Just because like the the lyrics are about something. Yeah, like, it's about like teenage angst and like like meaningful like life shit. Yeah. So, uh, but it's also like happy trumpet music. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's actually I, I like. I love that you mentioned ska. Like my yeah. favorite at the moment, uh, the genre of music I'm doing the most is drum and bass, uh -huh. which is the uh, same BPM beats per minute yeah. as ska. Uh -huh. So so it has that like bouncy upbeat, yeah. upbeat uh -huh. like and like and it's kind of quick. And so like right. that that's that's what I'm into. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I appreciate ska like right. for the same reason. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, I don't know. So like, how do you, so is it are all is all music like certain beats per minute? Like do they or do they have different <laughs> buckets of beats per minute for different kinds of um, genres? For electronic music, uh, uh, specifically DJ music, yeah, uh, yes, because uh -huh. um, there's obviously you want to do like the beat syncing. You have to you, you have to like mix and mix together. and mash, uh -huh. and like that's a big thing. I see. Um, the old school like like rock and roll way they uh -huh. literally like pressed record it was never to like a click track or anything uh -huh. so when you do try to like like put it in like a garage band logic whatever session yeah. virtual session uh you can't really sync it because it's like picks up a little speed here and there and then like, uh -huh. it's, a, okay. it's a little bit more organic i see most music modern music these days are to a click track I see. Um, but yeah each one definitely gives you different emotions obviously a slow one like um top top of my head billy eilish yeah. I'm more moody, sure. um, the more faster, the more upbeat, or yeah. angsty, yeah. Um, heavy metal, punk, sure. uh, same thing. Right. Um, I actually didn't like hip hop for the longest time because it was slow. I didn't realize uh, that okay. um, uh, until I started hearing remixes in uh, drum and bass of like Wu Tang, uh, and then I was like, "Oh, this is cool! I get it now! I get uh, it!" So, so like, yeah. Again, for me, I, I me personally, I yeah. love upbeat music. Yeah, and like. I didn't realize how much I loved hip hop until it was more upbeat. Interesting. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah, that's. No, I, I've never actually thought of the term <laughs> upbeat before. Yeah. Like because like up like you think upbeat is like oh it's fun or happy or whatever but re it's faster. Yeah. It's literally faster. It's, it's double giving, time. It's giving you more energy. The opposite of that. I know Daft Punk. They like took 
like more faster songs and slowed it down, reversed it, um, and like okay. it gives you a complete different vibe as well too. Interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I guess I've never really like, thought through like the mechanics <laughs> of music and. Not now that I'm sitting with somebody, you're blowing <laughs> that, mind. That, that's yeah. all I live for. Like I, I love, I love the technical stuff. Sure. And same, like same as art as well too. Like the minute I found out about layers within Photoshop, uh -huh. the possibilities are endless. <laughs> <laughs> the universe will be more. like you can just and and I, um, I'm starting like a musician a producer club kind of thing. Oh, dope. And like we we had our first song and i learned so much from these two dudes mm -hmm. like literally taking like a kick drum reversing it into a kick like makes us like such an effect mm -hmm. there's a boom. Uh, and i was like like it's like cool and you're like doing like a build into it uh -huh. like it just hits you like, like that much harder if it wasn't there so like yeah there's always like little cool like technical tricks here and there mm -hmm. um like going back to a build you can have a song that's stereo just uh, narrow it down and when like the build hit or when the drop chorus whatever hits, uh, it just like goes right back wide again and like yeah it just hits you like that so i pay attention to a lot of like these kinds of minor details interesting that yeah. might affect normal people <laughs> like right. subconsciously right yeah like you're you're really tuned into that yeah you're because it's I don't know, normies like me are just like, oh, song sounds good. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't, uh... Hey, you guys exist for a reason. I go to a lot of, like, normal people. I'm like, just, what do you think about this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think their, uh, their feedback is valuable. It's sure. Just as much, so. Yeah, because it's, well, I, I guess, yeah, you might, like, feel like you're getting yourself into a hole or something, because you you only see the technical stuff. Yeah. And, and you need to, like, if you're making music for like for other people to listen to you want it to listen to you, you want it to sound good just people other than you yeah. right and like going back to that like crunchy like shit music that dude made it's uh, like you have to look at that and be like but you know what like the structure was fucking good like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, vocal line, it that vocal line does hit like yeah. and, and like it just, at the end of the day it comes down to the kick snare and vocals mm -hmm. uh, melody like second secondary and it's like that's what makes a song special. Gotcha. Yeah, interesting. Everything else, all this tiny little ear candy, I like to call uh, them. Like they're, they're uh, extra. Like it's yeah, it's definitely it's not the main course. Yeah, it's, it's for audiophiles who like really care about the little <laughs> the little details or whatever. <laughs> that makes sense. Cool. Uh, so let's see. Okay, I kind of asked these questions. Um, what What do you think of like having a grappling network? So like having like just we know all these different people. We we're, we live in a community of all, a ton of different people, and having like I don't know a person for across all these different professions, like uh, whatever your graphic design music somebody else is like a scientist somebody else is like <laughs> i immediately thought of katie she's a scientist yeah, yeah exactly. you need to get her here that'd be yeah. interesting yeah that, that would be interesting yeah uh, i was uh <laughs> she she's down to come on so i just Sick. i just need to get her on hell so. yeah uh, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah i don't know do you uh what how do you feel about like meeting all these different types of people that you may not have otherwise met before. Uh, so, um, going back to your first podcast episode. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I love the fucking references. Dude, you did your homework. <laughs> one, one thing this. you said that, that I really, really, really love yeah. was like, you don't choose your coworkers. Yeah. And like, jujitsu is kind of like the same way. You just have these wild dudes come in, uh -huh. like each one with their weird background. Right. And like, yeah, like again, Katie, like a scientist yeah. doing sure. jujitsu is fucking crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's super badass. Uh, my cousin, she's like a nurse and she yeah. does jujitsu. That's so. awesome. Right. <laughs> Because it's, um, yeah, it, it makes life interesting, right? Like, you don't, I don't know, people you hang out with at work is like, you, you uh, I don't know, like, like they all are kind of similar to you because they're all at the same job as yeah. you, right? Because, so they all, I don't know, like, I, I just reposted this meme earlier this week about, like, tech bros. <laughs> like, they're, they're different, they're, they're five different hobbies that they have. It's yeah. like, Hiking, going out clubbing, and 
whatever vaping. I don't, I don't know what other. I don't know what other what, what the things were. Being a podcaster, I, I, I fell into that trap apparently. Um, but uh, yeah, like people, there like stereotypes exist for a certain reason. So like, you want to break out of that and get a bit a broader perspective of the. It world. makes you a way interesting person. So um, one thing like about jiu-jitsu like when i said like you're going to be doing jiu-jitsu when you're in your late 20s ali i was like what like i would never do that right but it's like what my mindset back then was like i never like i always associated grappling or specifically mma yeah with bro culture sure (laughs) i never Uh i never associated with like it nerd intellectuals Uh um yeah and yeah frat boy culture and it was like yeah, that, that that weird prejudice with it. Sure. And so, like, when you find out, like, someone like Katie exists that does, like, both yeah. science stuff mm-hmm. and jujitsu. Sure. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you a way more, like, interesting. Like, I want to know more about you. Yeah. Yeah. Because it it's a, it's a, yeah, very unique perspective on the world. Because you, what, what path through life did you take to, <laughs> to get to this point, right? Like, it's that, that must have, that sounds like a really, like hell of a ride to get to here. So, who bullied you? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a normal person and yeah. just pick up jujitsu, right? Exactly. <laughs> Something happened to you. Exactly. Um, cool. All right. Uh, I guess uh, anything you want plug or whatever. Um, let me say. Let me say. Saint Regal on Instagram. Uh, it, it, it's actually Saint Rigel. Rigel. Oh, I, I, should, I should. No, no, it's okay. I, I should like a lot of people fuck it up, but yeah. I, I guess I should like officially say it out yeah. out loud. Right. It's Saint Rigel. We'll, 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 yeah. we'll clip that. And yeah. Like, you just, <laughs> do, do you put it in your tracks? Saint Right. Like, uh, I have a couple. Um, I have I have it. a couple of tracks that I don't uh, play uh, that isn't on Spotify, but like uh, I use it to hype up like a crowd uh, okay, into gotcha. the next song. So I see. yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> So I yeah I, I guess I do. Nice. <laughs> cool, sweet. But, but yeah, I'm on Instagram. I, I need to go back on Facebook. I hate Facebook so much. It's terrible. Um, yeah, I'll, I, I'll try. I, I'll try I, to be active on that. I, I, I never. I never go there. I, yeah. I've completely abandoned Twitter. Yeah, that toxic shithole. Right. And um, <laughs> uh, TikTok, I'm on occasionally, but I'll, I'll try oh, to be with, more productive. With the Zoomers on TikTok. <laughs> what, what is that like? I, I'm, I'm hardly like I, I barely know what I, TikTok is. Well, it, I mean, it's similar to Instagram Reel yeah. at this point. Instagram Reel is like they just take leftovers. They just like, copy pasted. For yeah, it's like the trend on Instagram Reel has been like long gone. Like their TikTok's moving on to other things. I see. But but like yeah, it's like memes, funny, stupid shit. I see. Um, the occasional dance, but whatever. Skip through that. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Instagram's like a, it, it's. Like it's what Facebook is to like <laughs> like you, I don't know I used to be on really active on not active like scrolling through Reddit and it's like whatever memes were on Reddit eventually filtered through to like Instagram and Facebook and I guess that that's the new like that's the new thing is like TikTok <laughs> all the new shits over there and then it eventually filters trickles through, down trickles down to to the old people platform. Well, Instagram's turning into. Like OnlyFans now, right? Yeah, or, no, it's Instagram subscriptions. Uh, I, I just saw Casey's like subscribe for four dollars yeah. or something like that. I was like, oh, it's starting. It's starting. It's <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's a uh, every creator should get on that. Like, if you have access to that, because I mean that that's partly why I shut down Google Grappling. It's like Instagram's gonna kill it. Like this is mm-hmm. this is so much easier. It's in app. People understand it. You already have a following. You already have a fo- like it's every follower that Casey has got that notification yeah. today and I signed up for it I was like okay I'm gonna support coach because I'm gonna reward this behavior because this is like the the thing that I wanted to do with go-go grappling so um yeah so I think we I don't know support your local creators whatever, whoever they are mm-hmm. um they make the good world go around so, yes yeah cool all right thanks Ollie Appreciate dude I love you, you. love you too <laughs>